What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, March 7th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the busiest lady in the business, Andrea Renee. What's good, Greg? You tell me, was it Captain Marvel? Captain Marvel was phenomenal. Mm, oh, I can't wait to see it tonight. <laughs> it's so good. You're going to have a great time. I yeah. put up a little mini uh, review on our Patreon page. It's my yeah. exclusive vlog for this well, week. I'm sorry, what Patreon is that? Oh, that's uh, patreon.com slash what's good games. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So if you are a patron and you haven't been by the page lately, um, go over there. You can check it out. No spoilers, of course. Um, just some of my thoughts on the movie, but... It was really well done. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Goose is the star of the film. The cat, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm, very excited. Kevin, are you excited? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, kind of. Re okay. That's I mean, listen, I, it's I was a like very you, low point like, I was like you, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, in, I talk about this in my, in my vlog. I was sure. like, I didn't know who the heck Captain Marvel was. Sure. I was like, who is this person? I've seen all of the other MCU movies, and I'm still like super confused. Yeah. The only person I really recognized was Agent Fury. So I was like, I had no idea what was happening they going into They didn't write for movie. me on this one, where I remember Ant-Man and the Wasp when that came around. I was like, I like Ant-Man, don't get me wrong, but I was like, I was still hung over from uh, Infinity War, where mm -hmm. I was like, I wanted more of that. The fact that this is a prequel, the fact that this is obviously going to lead into what's happening with Endgame, and Endgame's just like a month away pretty much, like, I'm all in. I can't wait yeah. to see it. I'm just, I'm just excited to be back, Kevin. It's good. We're back, baby! Are you going to stick around uh, tomorrow after Games Daily? Uh, that's a very on? random No, no, I'm not question. coming in tomorrow. I'm, I'm staying home to get ready for cooking with Greggy. Really? Yeah. Oh, prep too stuff. Bad. It'd be cool to have you on screen. He's catch. got a mise en place, Kevin. Me. Come on. You gotta book on. me. You gotta book maybe me. We'll call you know you. what I mean? You gotta book me. You can call <laughs> me while I chop stuff and get ready for cooking with Greggy film. Maybe. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can be a bronze member and submit your questions, comments, concerns, bad PSN names, and everything else under the video game sun. Then watch us record it live, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and roosterteeth.com as well is everybody listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you today ladies and gentlemen well first off i forgot i'm still trying to figure out the best way andrea yes craig fran came in here right mm -hmm. infected kind of funny with his franness and everybody liked when he hosted games daily because he did the rundown of what news stories they were going to be out, out he was the doing the, uh, almost like a cold open but not really yeah but i i have my rigmarole so i can't figure out where i want to insert that into the rigmarole and so then i've just been forgetting and moving it around today we're gonna talk about how ea's done with e3 kind of uh, nintendo doesn't want your mon money kind of and you can play your playstation on your ios devices kind of listen you don't have to do this greg people liked it a lot and i like it too i like giving what they want but i just gotta people. figure out the right way to put it people, people. <laughs> no people the show gets beamed no, out to people I they think it's listen. a great idea listen I come from a long history of doing those kinds of teases in my news stories sure. as well I mean I did news videos for a long time Greg a long time Mahalo Games I'll never forget oh uh, housekeeping for you don't forget the kind of funny world tour is rolling into Kansas City Missouri March 30th we will be there at the flying saucer uh, to party with you <laughs> there's no need to have a badge for anything you can just show up bring money for booze and food uh, if you want to go the extra mile though we are at Planet Comic Con throughout the day you can pick up those tickets of course all this is on kindoffunny.com slash events you go there you can see that I'm interviewing Mick Foley I'm doing the Superman panel with Tom Welling Dean Kane, and Michael Rosenbaum Nick Scarpino is doing a panel with Hen Henry Winkler, the Fonz. And then it just announced uh, <laughs> Tim is doing one with the Power Rangers. Tim is doing a Power Rangers panel at Kansas City. Uh, so go On ahead. Kindoffunny.com slash events. You can find out about that. And then don't forget the first weekend in April, which is right after March 30th, we're going to New York <laughs> City and doing a meet and greet there. All this is up in part of the Kind of Funny World Tour. <coughs> Thank you to our Patreon producers, Mohammed, Mohammed, Tom Bach, and Black Jack. And today we're brought to you by Brooklyn and Headspace, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be a jam-packed Roper Report. Time for some news. Kevin, how's your energy level? You know, you know that didn't that wasn't your best. You know what I mean? Still, can I make a point? He's still going. Yeah. Every time I listen to the show and Barrett does it, he doesn't do it right, Greg. We need Kevin to Barrett give Barrett thinks, some Barrett lessons. Thinks he's Be supportive, Andrew. He's trying his best. When I started doing it, all these nerds out there were talking shit for years. Now they love it. Kevin, I'm trying to give you a compliment. <laughs> Six hours on the rope report. We gotta be nicer to Barrett. He's like, he's on his. Do you think place. I'm mean to Barrett, Kevin? No, it's not that. It's just you know how it's a death by a thousand cuts. 
When Nick Scar Scarpino is literally I shitting on you every day. So, yeah, okay. That's a uh, fair point. He number does have to one, there's going to be no EA press conference at E3 <laughs> slash EA Play. So I understand oh, oh, oh. at first at first uh, glance, they're going to be like, well, they've been doing EA Play. They haven't been at E3 for a long time. Now at EA Play, no press conference. Let's hear from oh, EA themselves. Oh, oh, shit. 2019 will mark our fourth year of EA Play. What we envisioned as a celebration of play has become an incredible moment that we love to share with our community each year. Year. We are so grateful for all our fans who have joined us, and we look forward to making this year even an even better experience. This year, you'll see less talk and more play, with an event entirely focused on the heartbeat of EA Play, our player communities, and the games they love. This includes first hands-on with some of our biggest games, exclusive content from some of the most popular creators in the world, and free for all to attend. It starts this year on Friday night, June 7th, 2019, with an all-new EA Play kickoff event. Here's where it's important. We're skipping the press conference this year and are replacing it with multiple live streams that will air during the first two days of the event bringing you more of what you've told us you want more gameplay and insights from the team <laughs> making the games Weekends are meant for play, and this year we've moved EA Play Fan Fest to Saturday, June 8th, and Sunday, June 9th, where players will get hands-on with our games. We'll also have content creators streaming live from our Creator's Cave in the Hollywood Palladium, providing gameplay content to our players viewing online. EA.com will be, and then it's all promotional stuff like that. But that's enough talk for now. We've got plenty more to show in the months ahead. Tickets will be available next month, so stay tuned over the coming weeks and months to learn more about EA Play 2019, including the games, ticket availability, program schedule, and more. Andrea? Yes, Greg. Congratulations. You hosted last year's press conference, and they said there's no way we can top it. We're not doing it. <laughs> well, thank you, Greg. I'll take it. What do you think of this one? I think that this is absolutely the right move. Um, obviously, it's no surprise that I worked with EA last year at E3, and um, I spoke to them a lot about kind of lessons learned post show. And one of the things that I told them was, you know, I think it would be really beneficial for you guys to do more breakout sessions and to kind of target the audiences that really love specific types of games because everyone likes to poo-poo EA Sports Those during the sports press conference. Ball, but it's their biggest yeah. sector of the games that they publish and they have the largest fan base. And so that's the thing that, that's just one thing that, you know, was, uh, I think, something they wanted to address sure. for EA Play 2019 is to say like how do we service these different communities because somebody who's playing The Sims maybe doesn't want to watch a press release about the expansion coming for Battlefield 5 right so I think that this is the right call I'm excited to see more about what they have in store the creator cave has always been a really popular thing for fans of those specific streamers and YouTubers and gives yeah. them the opportunity to make content on site which is becoming a growing thing in popularity with other publishers as well for content creators to be able to like churn right away instead of having to do the recording or the capture and then get back to their house or their sure. computer and then do the editing. So I think this is the right move and a good call. Now, starting Friday means EA now or E3 now starts even just one day earlier. But, yeah, it's a kickoff Friday <laughs> event. You watch the live stream from your hotel, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, unless they lead with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Dragon Age 4, and then you know you're going to show up. <laughs> but I mean... Uh, yeah, well, that's the interesting thing of what this actually means, what these things would actually be, right? They're talking about the fact we're skipping the press conference, replacing with multiple live streams. So, you know, it kicks off on Friday night, sure, but then they're talking about the EA Play Fan Fest being Saturday and Sunday being the real day. So is, if they're doing streams on Friday <laughs> night, are they doing them from there? Are they inviting press and media? Is it just them doing pre-canned presentations of it? You know, I think there's a bunch of different ways to slice this, all of which I think better serve the community in every, the way you just expressed than what traditionally has been. And that's the thing is I know I've already seen people obviously being like, oh man, smart move. EA's press conference always sucked. And then I've also seen that ones of, oh man, I miss the, I'm going to miss the hype of having another press conference, right? It always mm -hmm. was exciting to see these hour and a half blocks of video games and well, who's going to do what and how's it going to go to see another one fall out of it similar to PlayStation, right? Uh, I think it's the right move for EA in the way that I don't think when we talk about who's won E3 and what was the best <laughs> press, press conference, right? EA is never in those conversations. Usually they are the lowest because they have to be the most broad. And you raise such a great mm -hmm. point that if they're able to say, hey, guess what, everybody? Here is our E3 lineup. And rather than it be a press conference, we all sit down and wait for what we want. It is like, cool, here's the Star Wars section at whatever time. Here's the next thing from Respawn announced game at this time. Here is uh, FIFA. Here is Madden. You can suddenly be like, oh, cool. I'm only going to tune in for what I want and I won't feel like man 
I hate having to watch this John. Like, what was it last year or two years ago where they ended with the uh, maybe it was last year Battlefront or no, two years ago Battlefront they ended with a giant multiplayer that was in Battlefront 2017 thing. yeah and it was like the 64 player live cool, 20 minute like, battle there yeah, was, was like bad. this giant argument not an argument but push and pull of I just wanted to see the cool trailer and hear about the game you're making me watch the game and I don't want blah, 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 blah. like it's impossible to serve so many audiences that a, a corporation as big as EA needs to serve when they have so many different kinds of games. This is a smart move. Absolutely. And right now, particularly in the wake of everything that's happening with Anthem, despite Apex Legends' success, you know, EA just can't seem to do anything right in the eyes of gamers. And sure. that's super frustrating. And I kind of go on a rant about it in this, in this week's What's Good Games. You rant? Oh, yeah. No, I, I don't like to do that at all, Craig. Um, so... I said last year, very specifically, when we were doing rehearsals, <laughs> I said, listen, I can stand on stage and pass out $100 bills to literally everybody in the audience, yeah. and I, somebody would still find a reason to be mad at me for, for it, because I, people want to hate on EA, sure. and that's a really unfortunate position, because I think that there's a lot of really talented, great, wonderful people who work at EA globally, and the corporate marketing decisions should not have to blanket the entire company. Sure. And I hope that we can, you know, get beyond this weird, angry lynch mob phase that we're in and remember that they do make some really fantastic games. Sure. Question for you in a similar vein of this. Do you, what do you think this means for Bethesda? This has always been my question about Bethesda, right? In terms of when Fallout 76 was happening and everything was going wrong, <laughs> canvas bags and bad glitches and this, that and the other. Do you think they still do a traditional press conference this year? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And from everything I've heard, they're going to be in their normal time slot and they have a lot to show. Don't forget, we still haven't seen that standalone expansion from... Uh, Wolfenstein, sure. right, with the, yeah, yeah. With the daughters. The daughters. Haven't yeah. seen that yet, yeah. so imagine that we're going to see that again at E3 and yeah. actually see like a lot of gameplay because we haven't gotten a trailer or release date or anything. Sure. Probably going to see something more from Elder Scrolls. We're going to see Doom Eternal. Don't have a release date for that yet either. You imagine you get Rage 2 DLC, right? Like their first wisp of that. Mm, probably it? not because no. the release date's mid-May. But I mean, it's it's possible. I mean, just a hint at it. I mean, think about how like think about with what you're talking about with Wolfenstein, right? Mm -hmm. Like how long that's cooked. It doesn't need to be immediate. It's just like, hey, you've all been enjoying Rage Two. Here's how many copies it sold, or some statistic of hours or things killed. True. New Rage trailer out today, by the way, of being the wasteland superhero blown shit up. Yeah, uh, I think you could do something and piggyback off that to be like, there's more content coming and blah blah blah. Yeah, they could, but I, I think they'll probably want to pivot it more of like a, a catch up with what's happening, where the improvements for Fallout 76, and then hopefully what we're all really crossing our fingers for is a nice look at Star field but yeah we'll see i'm not gonna hold my breath i might don't know Andrew, you'll <laughs> never make it even if you're it's e3 so far away um yeah excited to see e3 continue to grow and evolve on this and i don't even mean grow because obviously they're leaving ea is not at e3 but you know what and I mean. they haven't been for a couple of years Sure, but now, i mean how so. does all this change and you know what i mean like it's so cool right now of like everything's there are no rules what the hell is gonna happen you know what greg i'm grateful what's for what's that monday is gonna be not such a terrible day Sure. Because there's no EA Play on Monday this year. Oh, okay, okay. There's no PlayStation Conference on Monday. There's probably going to be Maybe a kind of funny game showcase, gonna... though. Kind of funny game showcase. <laughs> Tell your developer friends to hit me up. Are you going to slide into that spot? I, I, we think about it. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I was more of like looking around, like waiting for somebody else to take the spot, like a, a, a big company. And if nobody yeah. does, fuck it. Yeah, we'll take the PlayStation slot. What do we care? Here's a bunch of indie games. <laughs> Have fun. Number two on the Ripper Report. Nintendo doesn't want your money, kind of. Uh, this is from Rebecca Valentine over <laughs> at GamesIndustry.biz, who will be coming by to do Kind of Funny Games Daily with me during the week of GDC, which is why I feel all right pretty much reading her entire article, <laughs> but encouraging you to go to GamesIndustry.biz and give it a click. Concerned with its self-image, Nintendo has reportedly asked some of its mobile game development partners to adjust the microtransactions in their titles so that users won't overspend. The Wall Street Journal reports that sources at Cyber Agent, which owns Dragalia Lost developer Psy Games, have asked the studio to adjust its microtransaction-driven character lottery so players won't pour as much money into trying to win rare characters. Ah. <laughs> I did that thing where I drank a lot of coffee, which is great for conversations, but not for reading, and I screwed up. Quote, Nintendo is not interested in making a large amount of revenue from a single smartphone game, one cyber agent official reportedly said. Quote, if we managed the game alone, we would have made a lot more money. 
The sources say that Nintendo is apparently worried it will be seen as greedy if players are spending too much. All of Nintendo's mobile games have been free to play or start with microtransactions optional. So far, Nintendo hasn't managed to produce a true mobile hit. Its first attempt, Mi- Mitomo, was uh, shut down only two year- only- after only two years. Nintendo president uh, Kimishima said that Super Mario Run, a game that was free to start with a paywall for later levels, did not meet our expectations. Fire Emblem Heroes seems to be doing better. Using a more traditional microtransaction model where players can pay to acquire new hero characters, the game has brought in around $400 million in worldwide revenue since launch, as Sensor Tower reported back in August. At the same time, it had far outstripped Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, which only made $42 million from its launch in November 2017 to August 2018, and has been criticized over time for its excessive reliance on microtransactions for players to make progress. Dragalia Lost, Nintendo's most recent mobile endeavor, also seems to be struggling. Cyber Agent lowered its projections for its 2019 fiscal year in its Q1 financial report for the first time in 17 years, going from 30 billion yen to 20 billion yen. As President uh, Fujita acknowledged in his statement about the lowered forecast, uh, this was partially due to Dragalia Lost not maintaining momentum despite interest at launch. Nintendo is currently working on two mobile games for 2019, Mario Kart Tour and Dr. Mario World. Andrea, what do you think? That none of this is surprising. Yeah. Nintendo hasn't technically needed anybody's money for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Steimer said that she likened them to a dragon sitting on its pile of gold. Sure. Because Nint- Nintendo has a lot of cash in the bank, which a lot of other major publishers and platform holders technically don't have. All of their equities really tied up in their stock options. But Nintendo has like a bunch of money just kind of laying around in a vault somewhere. Um, and so all of the, the decisions they make, it seems, are not primarily driven by profits, as they're saying here, right, in this in this quote. Sure. But obviously profits are going to be part of business because that's the reason you do business is to make money. Of course. I think that they're testing the waters here with all the mobile content. They haven't quite find a, found a formula that works. We've all been clamoring for Nintendo to really come to mobile in a meaningful way for a long time now, but they haven't quite gotten it yet right and i'm hoping that they'll find a formula that works and listen doing free-to-play models with microtransactions is not an exact science you know you really kind of got to test the waters to see what your community wants and what people are willing to pay for and what they're not willing to pay for yeah and so i hope that they can maybe reach out to some other you know major publishers or developers in the space and find a way to bring these amazing fan favorite ips to the mobile space because i would love to play more more you know, Nintendo games on my phone. Sure. What I love about it is what you're hitting on is the fact that, yeah, they're telling their partners not to, you know, gouge for money. This isn't what it's about. And what they are seemingly trying to do is find a new way, right? Yeah. There's this easy path over here that so many people have done. And I'm not even like throwing, you know, being aggressive towards microtransactions or free to play games or anything like that. There's a, clearly a way that works, but there's also a backlash to it where it is like, man, this seems like you're just, you know, money grubbing. We don't want to be a part of that. And so they're tr- over here trying all these different options that are not meeting expectations like they're talking about with Super Mario Run but are still trying to find that and are committed to finding a way to seemingly be fair to their core fan base and not have it be that hey here is a Mario game we are cashing in on it and we're going to just take your money and run and not care if it's good or if it's the Nintendo quality or any of that thing it's a little ironic the concept of we're not going to cash in on a Mario game when how many times have we all paid for like the Super Mario Brothers early platform games multiple times sure. across literally every piece of Nintendo hardware that's ever been released. Of course. Right? Yeah. It's like, you know, then we bought it again when we got the SNES Classic or the Nintendo yeah. Classic. I was like, how many times have I bought Super Mario Brothers 3 in my lifetime? But like, this <laughs> is know? the thing, right? And again, you're, you're touching on it. And I think, you know, especially going from the EA story to this story, right? And talking about the hate that is out there for ea right that puts Mm -hmm. any game or developer that has an ea sticker on it uh behind the eight ball already they have to really work uphill and that's why i think apex legends has found so much success right Mm -hmm. to the point that yesterday i was like wait is that i had to double check i it sounded so foreign that ea had something to do with it because i was just totally on another track right yeah they bought respawn oh i I know i'm aware of the facts but i'm just saying in the middle of whatever argument we were having for that to come up i was like wait what it's the idea that when you do the right thing, right, and I'm using air quotes, but when you do 
pro gamer, pro consumer moves, when you are Nintendo on that level, right, you get away with more. And granted, there's years and years and years and years and years of nostalgia for Nintendo, of growing up and sitting there, you know, the TV lighting your face when you're sitting there in your shorts with your friends playing whatever on the NES. But it is this idea that you see Nintendo trying, right, and trying to be good and trying to do the right things. And so then when you see something like EA, right, with microtransactions and fucking it up with Star Star Wars or whatever and having to work their way out of it and then still doing an old press conference and blah, and I, again, you're seeing movement now with them doing EA or E3 a different way or EA played a different way. Like, I think that's the power of having a longer track record of trying to be good to the consumer, right? Of trying not to. And that is the thing when you talk about, yeah, man, I've, as soon as they, I will buy Super Mario World on anything you put Super Mario World on. And I don't feel like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm paying for this game again, right? Like most of the time, everybody's excited to pay for that game again and excited to go do that because it feels like it's been done the right way. And sure, there's a million ways I'd do it differently if I was in there, but they don't need my help, apparently, as they continue to just rock on and be awesome. Blackjack writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games with this question just like you can and says when Nintendo announced its partnership with DNA back in March 2015 <laughs> the switch was still being referred to as the NX and nobody knew exactly what it would be the Wii U was a titanic failure and Nintendo was trying to find a way to stay relevant now the switch is a runaway success and Nintendo's mobile game initiative hasn't produced financial success does the mobile games market even matter to Nintendo anymore will Nintendo continue to explore mobile development or has the switch made that unnecessary moving forward is it too soon to declare the mobile game experience by Nintendo a failure love you guys blackjack Short answer, yes. Also, a little hyperbolic to say it was a titanic failure. Well, you suck and you know it. Against, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't fact, the best console seven. ever created, but Don't it wasn't the worst. It. It, sucked. it wasn't the worst console, no. Come on, there was a virtual boy. But I'm saying it was a titanic failure. Huge failure. <laughs> After the Wii? Come on now, what are you talking about? But no, I, I, I agree with you that yes, it is... It, no, it, it is way too <laughs> soon to declare this a failure. This is Right now, the way they're talking about it, is the way I think that applies that quote better than anything, right? Uh, you what is it? You've never I can't even fucking do the quote, but it's like you know the one. Uh, you're not fa- you're not failing. You just haven't succeeded yet. You know what I mean? Like every failure is is isn't a failure. It's just you trying to succeed until you actually succeed. And I I feel like that's what they're coming at it with. That yes, we have right. the money, we have the investments. Like why not try to make this work until we can make it work? Well, and I think it's important to remember some of these numbers that you read in this story. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes brought in around 400 million worldwide in revenue. That is a fantastic number. And something that they said was maybe, you know, middling success still brought in 42 million. There's no way that Animal Crossing Pocket Camp cost $42 million to make. So (laughs) I think they're probably right side up on that as well. You know, so I think it's important to remember and to put it into perspective that even though it might not have met their expectations or their projections, it still was financially solvent. And because of that, Nintendo, of course, is going to keep moving into mobile as they should. This new report that came out from Newzoo this week said 2.4 billion people will game in 2019 thanks to mobile gaming because mobile gaming is now the most popular place for people to play video games. And if you're a game maker and you're not thinking about mobile, you're really missing the boat because that's the future of video games is not only streaming, as we've been talking about with this new Xbox box, right? Um, But also mobile devices are going to continue to get more and more powerful and be able to do more 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 intricate types of games in the future. Yeah. You want to have, in the same way I, I compliment Xbox all the time, right? On building this foundation right now and streaming and having Xbox Game Pass and really preparing for what they think comes next, right? It's the same thing here that, yeah, Nintendo is going to keep chipping away at this and trying to figure out how to build a better mousetrap because as we've seen with loot boxes, as we've seen with free-to-play games, like that market is so new and still so, and evolving so quickly and changing so quickly that you can't sit there and be like, there, that's the difference between, hey, I want to build something that is going to work out for everybody and hey, I want to build a cash in. They could you know, t- make a Mario game right now that is uh, free to play with all these weird microtransactions and you know, do this level, do that thing and like make a lot of money, which they're telling their people not to make. Or they could sit there and try to figure out how do we make Nintendo quality games on mobile devices and have our core audience that's been with us forever and will be with us forever if we don't fuck them over still happy and that's what they're trying to do I salute them for that it's similar to PlayStation VR I feel too of like hey 
We're trying with this thing. Let's, let's set our expectations correctly on what we're doing. Let's go. Number three, speaking of PlayStation, Greg Way, PlayStation has re- released for PlayStation 4 firmware 6.50, uh, which, of course, is a big deal because you can swap the X and O buttons now, which is, it may not sound like something if you've ever imported a game. Huge problem in terms of what it accepts and what denies. But more importantly, it allows for remote play of the PlayStation 4 ver- via an iOS app. Here's the official description of that iOS app. Use PlayStation 4 Remote Play to access your PS4 via Wi-Fi wherever you go. Display the PlayStation 4 screen on your mobile device. Use the on-screen controller of your mobile device uh, to control your PlayStation 4. Join voice chats using the mic on your mobile device. Uh, Enter text on your PlayStation 4 using the keyboard on your mobile device. You need the following items to use this app. Mobile devices with iOS 2.0. 12.1 or later installed Uh, iPad 7 iPad or I'm sorry iPhone 7 iPad 6th generation and iPad Pro 2 second gen or iPad Pro second generation or later are recommended a PlayStation 4 system with the latest uh, system software version and account for the PlayStation network in high speed internet access Uh, notes of use on this app this app is not compatible with some games this you I'm sorry you cannot use the DualShock 4 with this app motherfucker and you can't use it on a mobile, just a mobile network. You need to be on Wi-Fi. You can't have it on your data. Fuck! What's the point of it then? Fuck! It was so close. That's my and now. It God, God damn it, Andrew! It was so close when it I dropped. Know. I saw it. I was like, can I can I get my uh, place my Dual Shock connected to it? I cannot. And so, I was like, so how do you use it then? Touchscreen, touchscreen only. Boo. Yeah, big boo, big boo on that one. It'll be helpful if you want to. If like for some reason you couldn't. Down, uh, you know how you can see, you can go through obviously the PlayStation.com and, and trigger your downloads that way. For little management stuff like that, it might seem like useful. For simpler games, like even like a, a turn-based strategy, you know, turn-based mm-hmm. RPGs, you could use it probably pretty easily. Yeah, I, the one key use I think I can pinpoint for this would be if I'm, let's say I'm here at the office, sure. and I'm like, oh my gosh, I would love to just boot up Assassin's Creed Odyssey and play a quick mission. But my save is at home. Log in, upload my save there you go. to yeah, the yeah, cloud. Yeah, that's a great one, yeah. Download it here. I mean, yeah. that seems to me to be the only functional use for it. Yeah, a lot of people obviously when this got were, were tweeting at me about this, and then also being like, "This is what the Vita died for," and that's my biggest problem with it. Is like looking at this, it's like, oh well, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I can't even. I can't even with that statement. This Hold on, no, stick with me. I'm not, I'm not. Okay. S- oh, okay, okay, okay. This Sorry. is what the Vita died for. That was a joke. I think they're joking. That's not why they, they didn't like fucking end Vita production just so they could do this at all. No, well, but I'm saying like. If this was, if remote play was this important, why wouldn't I just carry around my Vita still? Or why wouldn't I pick up a Vita? Because then I would have at least sticks. I wouldn't have both the shoulder buttons. I'd have to use that stupid crappy touchpad. But I remember doing a remote play on my Vita for yeah. Destiny to go visit Zer. There you go. See, and that's the easiest <laughs> way around it, right? I was seeing it. Yeah, like, you know, I'm, I'm just, uh, and that, that's what sucks about this is that, again, it's almost there. And again, hopefully it's laying groundwork, but I don't know. Let's bring in a question from Topical or uh, Tropical. Trent, with PlayStation 4, uh, 4 announcing the streaming option for iOS devices, do you think they can give Xbox or Microsoft X Cloud a run for its money? Did they learn from the Play Anywhere promise of the Vita? Rest in peace. Uh, I want to bring in Dapper Steven with a PH as well. He wrote in, just like Trent did, to patreon.com slash games and says, Remote play for the PS4 on iOS is here. However, this remote play is the exact one for my PlayStation Vita. May it rest in peace. It only works over Wi-Fi and not over your mobile network, and it only supports touch input from the iPhone. No DualShock 4 supported. Why do you think PlayStation put this out without a heads up? Do you feel like this is a half step of, hey, this Vita software will work on iOS. Let's throw it up there. They should like that. Or do you think it's laying the groundwork for more play anywhere, next gen future, and all the other features that will roll out later? Trojan horse uh, uh, option. I hope in my heart of hearts that it is a Trojan horse move. Of just like, let's get people understanding this and trying this, and maybe it doesn't work the way they will want to, but they'll understand that they can do this kind of thing with it. Maybe that leads them to, yeah, dust off your Vita and use it. Maybe it leads it to the fact that you can remote play on your, your PC, your laptop, right? And you can connect your DualShock there and have it there if you want it that way. My hope would be that the reason they're not making a bigger deal about this, right? It's up. There's no blog post about it. I, you know, I caught it through Wario64 tweeting and then everybody else tweeting at me about it. I downloaded it, tried to use it in the office. It's like your Wi-Fi is not strong enough. I'm like, great. Okay, awesome. This is it. And I was in the back room and we're doing a bunch of Wi-Fi stuff here. So who knows? The hope would be that, yes, this is them as 
as I've talked about yesterday with Gary, Microsoft being very boisterous about all the things they're doing and what they're trying to do with their next gen streaming technology and X cloud and all this jazz. Hopefully this is PlayStation putting it together the pieces to get there and hopefully turn that corner. I think you're overthinking this. I think this is one team internally not talking to the comms team. And you just, think so? <laughs> I honestly do. I really think that somebody just like pushed the update live, didn't bother thinking to talk to comms, the communications team. And so it just went live. People were like, hey, what's this? I think I really truly think it's just as simple as that. Yeah. I don't want to even try to extrapolate that this is some kind of subversive move in response to what Xbox oh, has I don't been think it's announcing. Subversive. I, I would just hope that that it is them getting ducks in a row to an extent. I think that they're probably heads down focused on PS5 right now. Yeah. I don't even think that they're paying attention to what their competition is doing at this point because the, that those conversations of like how do we adapt and change to where the market is probably happened a couple of years ago. And not to say that they're not always keeping an eye out, you know, like head on a swivel kind of a thing, but I, I, I don't imagine a world in which they're going to make some kind of giant pivot in their hardware research and development right now. Yeah. I don't know. It's just as usual, the I think Xbox is being not transparent, but I think they're talking a lot and giving us even through uh, they're giving us enough to kind of understand or at least hope with what they're going to do and at least be able to put together the pieces of what we think they're going to do. Whereas PlayStation yeah, has been so quiet about PlayStation 5 and what it's going to look like and where we're going and what, what their vision is for the future. It's fascinating, but scary, Andrea. I just want to know. <laughs> <sighs> Number four. An Anthem fix is coming for the PlayStation 4 crash, as we talked about earlier. This is Michael McWhorter over at Polygon. Bioware says it has identified the issues in Anthem that were causing players' PlayStation 4 systems <laughs> to crash and will issue a patch to fix that problem in an update expected on March 12th. In a stream on Twitch today, Anthem lead producer Ben Irving uh, said that Bioware discovered a bunch of things that were causing crashes, and we've addressed them in our patch. Irving also said that, based on Bioware and Sony's investigation into the crashes, they haven't found any consoles were actually bricked or rendered completely unusable by Anthem crashes. Quote, in all the instances we're aware of that we've investigated in partnership with First Party, they can be powered back up if you know how to just turn the power back on and cycle it properly, Irving said. Uh, those findings were echoed by Chad Robertson, head of live services at BioWare on Twitter. Quote, we've identified several causes for the temp power down uh, crash some PlayStation 4 users have experienced. Fixes for the top issues are in, a, in, in, pat, are in patch next week. If you encounter a game crash where your PlayStation 4 won't respond, you can manually power down and restart it, no risk of damage. After thorough review, we have not encountered an instance where Anthem has bricked a PlayStation 4 console. If you are experiencing anything different, please reach out to at EA help so we can track the incident and investigate, end quote. Irving said that Bioware, that Bioware will fix, quote, real soon, a bug related to damage scaling in Anthem, uh, which has been leading some high-level weapons to be less effective than the game's basic starting weapon. You want to talk about a game that can't catch a break, Right. I remember when Fallout 76 and all that shit has happened, I was like, man, they're in a bad way, right? And I think, again, I think the base game of Anthem, far better than the base game of Fallout 76. But again, just a PR nightmare of falling out of the bad news tree and hitting every branch on the way down. Uh, I, it sucks that it's still a week out or whatever, March 12th, until you, we'll get a patch for this. Of course, my, my system crashed on Monday night. I haven't been home uh, the last couple of nights to actually play. Uh, that sucks. I don't want to play and be worried about it. And I know that, yeah, it's, you know, it, I, if you know how to power it back up, no big deal. And it, 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 But it's just like... That's well, like then don't. Just wait until the patch comes I'm out. I'm going to. I'm not, I just, it sucks. I, I'm uh, actually very impressed that they pivoted this quickly yeah. after starting the investigation effectively on Monday of this week, right? Because sure. all the reports started hitting Friday and over the weekend is when, you know, the subreddit started getting filled with people saying, hey, I've been experiencing this. Them identifying the problem, trying to talk to the community and having people submit, you know, tickets so they can say, hey, let's research this and investigate this. Um because I guarantee that PlayStation did not know that this bug was in there when they certified the game, oh, sure. right? Yeah. But sometimes these things just manifest after launch in certain situations that you can't simulate in a pre-launch environment. So I'm you know, really glad that the fix is coming so quickly. And I think, once again, this is people you know, being outraged over something that was completely fixable. This is part of my rant on what's good, and I'm not going to go into it here because I just can't anymore, Greg. Just okay. Just can't. Okay. Well, I don't want to poke the bear or anything. I mean, I, I think... No, because I'm at a point now on this show where I can't say anything about it. 
Anthem mm-hmm. or anything in general? Anthem specifically. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for you to co-host your show. And I, mean, I need to quit, Craig. Um, just kidding. <laughs> JK. That's um, what drove Jared away. He couldn't talk about Red Dead anymore. Yeah, he was like, I'm done. He's, he's got to get out of this thing. Takes yeah, his yeah, cowboy yeah, yeah. hat yeah. off and walks away. Yeah. Again, I think it's that this is what we talk about all the time. What I talk about with the division, right? Of like, mm-hmm. I can't fucking wait for the division. I'm all in on the division. Yada, 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 yada. Right. Like division for me is, I think how Anthem was for you. And I'm totally ready that the division is going to have something fucking wrong with it at launch. Probably. I'm right? glad that and you're going not. in with that expectation. Well, cause... I mean, honestly, that well, that's the whole thing. And this is a, you know, an ongoing debate on the subreddit and comments and everything else and everywhere in the internet, not even just with us, right. Of, is it okay to expect an online uh, games, a game as a service to come out and have problems? It's not, I don't think it's, okay that's a shitty place to be that we expect that but that's also reality of again what we've talked about at length right is i don't think you can do a beta for, unless you launch your game in beta i don't think you can put out a beta and have it then extrapolate out for like okay this is this is how it was when five hundred thousand people used it that doesn't tell you what it's going to be like when three million people are online doing the same things right exactly it, like as much as i i you know we give a uh, uh, shit back in the day of the old uh, playstation tetris game and then house marks games crashing because uh, i had a full friends list all the time mm-hmm. right it's like i get that i'm a, a unique use case there i understand that that shit happens and that's going to that has to happen it's not okay it's not like i'm like <laughs> well you know blah, blah 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 like but it is like the realities of making a game and putting it out into a live a- area and having to do a, dun- a bunch of different things you'd never do when you're running it on a test kit trying to figure things out totally and i understand that that's the reality of it but i think sometimes the gaming community loses focus and loses sight of the awe and wonder of the incredible technology that makes online games work. Sure. Right? If you think about how all of these different moving pieces need to align to allow you and me in two different locations to be able to talk to each other on the internet and sync up and drop into each other's games and we get to see our own customizations yeah. and like all of the moving pieces that make an online game so magical and special, I think sometimes people forget that that's really fucking hard sure. to do, right? And that's what I'm interested about with the Anthem Crash is... Again, it, it affected me. It has stopped me from playing Anthem mm-hmm. this week because I could have played last night, I guess. Um, I, I, when, it, when it broke, and you know, Jason tweeted about it on March 4th, right? So or, you're right. I think that's sinking. I just want to make sure my timeline's correct. Oh, so, God, it's already Thursday. Uh, Monday of this week, right? Coming out of the weekend and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, well, I'm sure it's not that big of a problem that wide ranging right but- i know i know and I, and I said this too earlier and of course you know people are like oh you you're downplaying how bad the issue is i go no you're you're blowing over. I mean, you're blowing up how bad the issue is. It's not like people aren't getting bricked consoles all over the country. And thank you so much for clarifying the nomenclature because sure. it seemed like a lot of people on, on the subreddit were incredibly confused. Sure. And I think maybe well, people... because I mean, it's and I, I don't mean to cut you off. No, no, but please, I understand. It's fine. I can, I can, I understand. And I never want yeah. you to come on any show, your show or our show, and feel like you can't talk about something. Right. But it is that thing. Obviously, I've seen it. I've been in the subreddit. Tim and I had the conversation on Tuesday about it. Right. Like I get it. I under and it, it is us playing fast and loose you're not working on a script it's we're talking we're having a conversation you see how it evolves and goes from there and it is a conversation that involves everybody watching and being a part of it and so i hear you and i understand what you're talking about and i think it's just been a sticky situation in there is this gap right Mm -hmm. where it's like i i think that as we initially read about the crashes my knee-jerk reaction on anything any video game, uh, it eats my save, it does this thing, it blah, 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 is to go more towards, all right, I'm sure it's a select group. Because I feel like that's me being having done this job for 12 years. Where, of course, the people who are into Game X, I'm not even talking about Anthem, Game X, Y, Z, whatever, they're putting up, they're not putting up every night. Had a great, flawless session, didn't <laughs> crash on me, right? When it is that people are now on a subreddit totally right, and they are yeah. saying it, like, hey, this is a problem, you never know, is that... A problem so drastic that it's affecting everybody. And even when we talked about it on Monday when Shire's article broke, he put it up. You had mentioned, yeah, I'd kind of seen this. And I was like, I think I saw a Reddit post about it. But we didn't realize, you know, how many people it is. And we still don't know how many people it is. And yeah, it got it got me right. But again, it was for me, it was like, huh, funny because I was shutting it down anyway. I was done with it. And so mm-hmm. like, and like, how many people does this specific thing affect? And blah, blah, blah. My thing about it is I'm surprised and not shocked. What I'd love to know is what the issue really is, because I'm I, I'm not shocked. That sounds too that's way too much hyperbole. But I'm surprised that it's t- going to take this long 
for me, I thought the when it when it got reported and like people were sending other things, I got hit up obviously because I'm tweeting about it by support that was like, "Hey, can you explain the issue and run us through it all?" And I was like, "Oh man, if they're this on it that they're finding me and DMing me about it, like clearly they know it's an issue and they're working on it and it'll be the first thing they get out." And what? so to have it go to the 12th for me again. Everybody calmed. Let's all let's. And I'm talking to my the people. Of, <laughs> what, I don't know. Everybody, let's just chill out. We're talking about video games, right? The fact that it's happening on the 12th either means to me that hey, this is a really complicated issue that took us forever to find, and it's going to take a little bit to fix. Or hey, it actually isn't that many people that it's affecting, so we can't. We're not prioritizing. Stop everything. Let's fix it. Well, don't forget, if they're fixing it, they could also break a bunch of things. So I'm sure, sure what they're trying to make sure that they don't do is push a fix that then breaks a bunch of other systems. Yeah. Because that's a very common problem in video game development. So I'm sure they're doing their internal tests to make sure that this fix that they're pushing is going to keep the code as it is intact so that they're not, you know, creating a whole new problem that they're going to have to fix the week after. Sure. And that's a great thing, too, that I think, you know, gets uh, I take for granted, too, even in this conversation that I'm taking for granted about how complicated all this is. I was talking to a developer friend the other day about a game and they were like, yeah, you know, we did this, which then fucked all of this. And we thank God we didn't push that live because that would have crippled this, that. But it was like, oh, fuck, yeah, you don't think about that little change. And that's why, yeah, it is complicated and it is a totally fucked up situation. And it is. uh I think it's taking too long, but maybe that's as long as it needs to take, you know, and there's a million different moving parts to this thing, right? It's true. Well, it's, you know, it's March 7th today. Yeah. So the 12th is just five days away. <laughs> sure. But you know what that means? What? I'll be an activated agent by the one. <laughs> I won't give a shit about Anthem. March I won't 12th? give a shit about Tetris 99. Best game of all time. I will forsake all other games for the division. Please work on launch. Please. <laughs> right, Barrett? Yeah. You're in there with me. It's We're okay. saving DC. Woo! We're saving DC. Yeah! <laughs> Video games are fun. They really are. Number five. Nintendo's getting into VR with Labo. This is Hope Corrigan over at IGN. Nintendo has announced a new VR kit as part of its Labo cardboard accessory lineup. According to its official Labo website, the new offering will be available from April 12th. Uh, there will be a starter set alongside two expansion sets. You will also have the option to buy the full kit for $80, uh, which will include materials to build all six of the VR jo toy cons, my apologies, included with the other sets. The starter set will retail at 40 bucks and will include the material to build uh, the VR goggles, parentheses, which look like housing for the Switch, similar to Google Cardboard, as well as Blaster Toy-Con, parentheses, which appears to be a gun-shaped accessory. It also comes with a screen holder and safety cap, so the games can be played in non-VR mode. Uh, the expansions uh, are set to go for $20. Each will be featuring this. You can read all about that stuff. Almost all the toy cons look as though they're designed to hold the Switch console up to the player's face, but the VR mode can be turned off and games can be played in 2D. You running not to buy this, Andrew? You want to get <laughs> some like, Labo? I, I, this is like, I feel like I can't say anything about this without sounding cynical. And I'm not trying to. I just like, I can't stop laughing when I'm looking at Somebody these with photos, the Greg. Face. Like the photos are just so hilarious. And Brittany and I would try to explain them. Uh, so imagine if you couldn't oh. actually see the photo of the girl holding the elephant thing to her face. Like how would you visually like describe that with words? Can you bring this up, and it's just If you it's, click through on yeah, It's Labo. hilarious. And the only way one that we saw here that actually has some kind of a head strap to hold the device to your face is the robot one. And the other ones, you're literally holding the cardboard with your switch like up to your up to your face. If you're a visual watcher, not an audio listener, Kevin's bringing it up. And yeah, this kid with the, the whatever the, the fuck girl that with is. The elephant, I just can't. <laughs> it's just it's so silly looking. And I know that this is obviously designed for kids. And yeah. It's meant to be something that's whimsical and fun and provides like you know an interactive form of entertainment. And I think that's all great. I just can't help but giggle a little bit when I look at it going, oh, Nintendo. Hey, man, exactly. It's for kids. It's not for us. You know, I mean, it could be for you. I'm not trying to take away if you want to play Labo VR. But it's funny how I have not thought of Labo at all since launch of Labo. And I hope it's doing well for them and it's, uh, kids are playing it and finding it. But yeah, I'm not. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I use my PlayStation VR in such limited doses, you know, mm -hmm. that I'm not going to run out and buy Labo VR there. But if I had a kid... And I wanted to entertain them and possibly ruin their eyes. I'd strap to their face. It's interesting. Didn't uh, Fisa May, wasn't he like, no, 
We have no interest in... Uh... <laughs> they had said they were investigating a while back, but yeah, it's been a weird ride of what they've been saying and what they haven't been saying about VR. This is like... I, but that's why Reggie retired, I heard. This is yeah. barely like, like a hey, toe like dipped it. in the VR waters. We got waters. some Labo VR coming in, Reggie's like, over my dead body. This Here's is my just resignation fancier letter. Google Cardboard. That's literally what it is. True. Uh, number six. Diablo's back and other classics are coming. This is from Blizzard. Blizzard Entertainment and GOG.com have teamed up to re-release select classic Blizzard games, beginning with Diablo, Blizzard's legendary 1996 action role-playing game that introduced players to the harsh and deeply rewarding world of Sanctuary. The original Diablo is available now via digital distribution for the first time ever on GOG.com. Players looking for the authentic Diablo experience can play the game as it was in 1996 with period-appropriate 20 frames per second SVGA graphics and the ability to matchmake through the classic version of Blizzard's Battle.net online gaming service. Blizzard and GOG.com have collaborated on an updated version of the game, which includes out-of-the-box Windows 10 compatibility and a host of bug fixes. Players can choose either version of the game from the launcher. Quote, we were bummed that these iconic games weren't available to our players, so we're happy <laughs> to work with the crew at GOG.com to rectify that, said Rob Riddenbecker, Vice President and Executive Producer, Blizzard Entertainment. <clears throat> this has been a long time coming, and we hope our players will be excited to jump back into these classic titles. In addition to bringing back the first Diablo, Blizzard is planning other GOG.com re-releases of Warcraft, Orcs and Humans, and Warcraft 2. More information on the return to Azeroth will be revealed soon. Go get them, PC dorks! Have fun! Just kidding, you're not really or a dork. Or just play Diablo 3 Eternal Collection on Switch, it's good. Or on, I play it on PlayStation, you know what I mean? Come on, I'll get some trophies. It's, it's not that bad of a plat, you know how it works. Andrea, yes, Greg. I'm excited to see what the orcs and humans look like when they go from their 20 FPS's <laughs> to the thing, and then the, we got the driver, and they got, we got a dot .ex. But that's going to take a long time for me to uh, unpack. Where could I go to find things that are out now that I could play right now? Why, Greg, you can go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny Game Seely show host each and every weekday. We have had a great discussion and a big Roper report, so before I give you the list, I'm going to give you the ads. Today we're brought to you by Brooklinen. You spend a third of your life in the sheets. It's about time for a bedding upgrade. I love my Brooklinen sheets. You know this. I love them. I mix and match them. I sleep on them every night. We like them so much that when we uh, need to clean them, we clean them and don't put any other sheets in the bed. We put them right back on, and he's sleeping like the, you know how they're kind of warm and cozy out of the oven or the oven, the, uh, the dryer. <laughs> the dryer. It's, fucking, it's great. Uh, Brooklyn and Sheets were named the winner of the best in online uh, bedding category by Good Housekeeping. They were founded in early 2014 by a husband and wife duo with a mission to make five star quality sheets uh, affordable and easy to order. Luxury sheets without the luxury markup because most bedding is marked up by as much. 300%. You can mix and match over 20 plus uh, colors and patterns. Uh, my Brooklyn sheets are the best, most comfortable sheets I've ever slept on, and now it's time for your upgrade. Brooklyn.com is giving an exclusive offer to my listeners. Get $20 off and free shipping when you use promo code GAMES at Brooklyn.com. Brooklyn is so confident in their product that all their sheets, comforters, and towels come with a lifetime warranty. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code GAMES at Brooklyn.com. That's B R O O K L I N E N.com. Promo code GAMES. Brooklinen, these really are the best sheets ever. We're also brought to you by Headspace, meditation voice. Mm. Headspace is your guide to health and happiness. In fact, just 10 days of Headspace has been proven to reduce stress and increase happiness. It will teach you life-changing skills of medita meditation and mindfulness in just a few minutes a day. Our own Barrett Courtney, Bear Bear, has been using it to go to sleep using rain sounds, and he says he loves it. Uh, meditation is rooted in tradition, but also backed by scientific research. 10 days of headspace increased happiness by 5%, reduced irritability by 27%, and reduced stress by 14%. Headspace has hundreds of meditation sessions uh, on everything from stress to sleep, and guided exercises to help you add a touch of mindfulness to daily activities like cooking, commuting, eating, and more. Start your journey towards a healthier, healthier happier life by subscribing to Headspace. Sign up now at headspace.com slash games and get a free trial month. Sign up online at headspace.com slash games for a free month trial and start meditating today. Out today! <sighs> the Wild Age on PC! Ninda on PC! I'm uh, sorry, everybody. 
and no bought a studio and developer uh de no and developer grizz is getting an update all right that's what i'm trying to say grizz undone a free update to the gorgeous narrative platformer featuring unused concept art and music tracks as a celebration of the game reaching 300,000 units sold uh grizz is currently 15 percent off a nintendo switch and pc via steam humble and gog uh the grizz undone update adds an elegant browser for fans to listen to a collection of music tracks by berlinist that are not featured in the game's final release as well as unused designs and concepts from creative director Conrad Rosette. Included in the collection is an all is an alternate version of the game's main musical theme and early designs for Grizz's now iconic dress. Uh, there's a new Rage 2 trailer around. I thought you should know about that. Rush, the fan favorite 32 player mode is now live in Battlefield 5. Tick tock! A Tale for Two is out on PC, Mac, and mobile devices. And guess what everybody? It's Thursday. That means there's a ton of Switch games. Mm -hmm. So here they come. ACA Neo Geo, the Ultimate 11 SNK Football Championship. Brave Land Trilogy. Ghoul Boy, Hard West, Mahjong Stories, Vampire Romance. God damn, I gotta pick that up. Uh, My Little Riding Champion, Space War Arena, V Rally 4, Valley, The World Tree Mosh. Uh, and then here's, we're done with that. Borderlands 2 VR has been patched to use the PlayStation Aim controller, which I'm pretty stoked about. So is Kevin. Cool. I added a couple things down here. Andrea, take it away. Oh, uh, the Indie Mega Booth has announced a new trailer showcasing the lineup for PAX East featuring 78 games from Ooh 18 wee. countries. And of course, they have the mini booth returning. And for the first time, they're going to be participating in the Penny Arcade. And those details about Penny Quest will be coming on March 22nd. I did add two things under new dates as well. New dates? Aquamoto Racing Utopia on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One is coming this spring. I think it's an update, actually. It's DLC. Uh, Diesel Brothers Truck Building Simulator is going to be purchasable on Steam on April 12th and available on PlayStation and Xbox One in late 2019. Grim Shade, inspired by RPGs of the 90s, has been announced and it will be releasing on Windows PC via Steam on March 26, 2019 and launching on Switch later in the year. Mars Z Tactical Base Defense, formerly Mars Z, this is, it's Mars, but with a Z instead of an S, Rising, uh, will be leaving early access uh, with the game's full launch on April 4th. And then World of Warships Legends will soon be coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on April 16th. What else you got, Andrew? Hot off the press, <laughs> Judgment, <laughs> Yakuza's detective-themed spinoff is coming to PlayStation 4 on June 25th. That release date was just announced. I thought we got it yesterday. Was it yesterday? I think so. so I, think, I think it was a You're Wrong for yesterday. Oh, because I just saw Eurogamers show. post about it. You nailed it. Don't worry. Okay. And lastly, 3D Realms and 1C Entertainment in collaboration with development Kill, developer KillPixel will pay kill, homage kill, kill, to the kill, classic kill. era of gaming with Wrath, Aeon of Ruin, a dark fantasy horror FPS powered by the original Quake engine. Get your first taste of Wrath in summer 2019 for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One versions will follow in early 2020. Excellent. Now it's time for reader mail, but we've been sprinkling it in. So I'm trying to find a good one here just to crush with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who can come out and just crush it and be done? Kill the show right there. You know what I mean? I need a crush tombstone it. pile driver of a question. Hmm. I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing a lot of clotheslines. It's not what I need. Mm, mm, I see what mm, you're saying. Mm. I mean, it's not they're bad questions. They're just not like, here's a, here's a, here's a, you know, a super kick or something. Right. Mm, mm. 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 Yeah. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's just use Anthony Poulon's one. We'll go from there. All right. Okay. Let me pull that one. Patreon.com okay. slash kind of funny. Anthony wrote in and says the conversation yesterday about the all digital future and Xbox Game Pass so sounded great for consumers. But what about developers? After movies and music went mostly di to the digital future, they became far more accessible. But the revenue pie became even more stretched with the lion's share going to AAA companies and brands. There are already an overwhelming amount of games out there struggling to get attention and make a profit. In a hypothetical future where everyone gets their games from a version of an, of an Xbox Game Pass, uh, then how is it possible for smaller time developers to be sustainable in an industry that already has many issues with burnout and layoffs? I think these are two ish different issues that you've mashed together. Yeah, we. I definitely wasn't saying yesterday have. that everything was going to Xbox Game Pass. I was. Gonna, yeah. I was saying that that's a very interesting model on Netflix. Yada yada. Uh, that's not the future where everything is on one subscription service. No, I think smaller developers absolutely have the most to benefit from an all digital future because it cuts out that incredible expense of distribution of physical media because mm -hmm. that marketing, making the boxes, making the advertisements, printing and shipping the disc, that's all a cost on your bottom line. And so if you can take that away and just push a digital code, 
um, you'll, that's more profits for you on the back end. So I think that that is a definitely a boon for smaller developers for digital future. When it comes to being bundled in a subscription service, I think it could be beneficial for some games because it will give them more visibility. And if you can hook people through an original subscription offering, like let's say a game like Rocket League is yeah. included in Xbox Game Pass. And once you get it, as part of your subscription and you get into the game and you're like, oh my gosh, look at all these amazing skins that I can buy for yep. my cars. Then now they've introduced that second point of sale to say, hey, we might not have made money on the initial offering, but now we're going to make money on digital in-game items down the line. We've talked about this, right? And had actual reports and conversations uh, from Xbox people and then developer people talking about the fact that, yeah, you put a game on there, you put the Tomb Raider games on there, you hopefully drive hope, you know, uh, excitement for the newest Tomb Raider, but you also sell the Tomb Raider DLC that was already there just sitting on the store mm -hmm. and I do think that as you move to an all digital future and let's say that the streaming Xbox we talked about yesterday Maverick is real it comes out it starts getting people on they're using Xbox Game Pass and they see how easy it is and how that's working I think you then have people start to understand what it is to then go into the Xbox Game Store and buy other things, right? They're already on the platform. We've seen so many developers talk about having their games on Game Pass leading to more successful and more sales because people are talking about it and getting it out there and people are buying it. But I also think, to your question, Anthony, right, where if this happens, I, I agree with Andrea that it's removing the box thing. It's actually making more revenue for the developers and it's also getting more consumers ready to buy digital games. I'm still always surprised when I meet people who don't buy things off the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store, right? They don't buy these indies that we talk about. And for me, I'm getting so many so often. I'm downloading you know two or three games a week from these indies. Uh, I think that once you break down that thing and suddenly people start going to the store and it is, oh man, here's a $5 game, a $10 game, whatever. I've heard them talk about this. It's on sale. I'll get in there and try this. You get people used to using that ecosystem. It was. I remember when my mom started using you know, Netflix through her Wii or whatever, and it was like, oh, she's starting to understand how this works. And I think that that then leads to not, oh, I want to rent a movie. You start thinking, well, I don't need to go to the store. I can go to Amazon Prime or I can go use this other service because I already mm -hmm. understand how that works. Well, and I think that goes a long way. You can just speak into your remote, which is what I do at home. It's pretty cool. But the problem is, your remote doesn't even have a microphone on it. You just drink too much wine. Oh. <laughs> I've seen you just talking in the remote. Nothing's happening. You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> and then John's like, John rolls his eye and just buys whatever you want on the store. <laughs> it's time to squat up. This is where one of you writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody plays games together. Today, Blake needs help on PC. His Uplay and Steam username is bear73 underscore. Hey, Greg and Andrea. Y'all are doing a great job on today's show. Parentheses, how's that for some future proofing? I'm writing in today in anticipation for The Division 2, but I'm looking for help in The Division 1. I'm not ready to let go yet. Before we all head to DC and leave New York forever, there is one lingering threat many of us are ignoring, Division Shields. These 12 challenges unlock rewards in the Division 2, one being an American flag backpack dangler. I want that dangler. Yes, I am unfortunately on PC, mainly to play with my brother, who is, who is in wanna get to two mode. Oh, okay, so I need your help, agents. Who's with me? If you wanna play some Division 1, get some shields with bear73 underscore, hit him, Blake, up on Uplay and Steam. Andrea. Yes, Greg. We asked people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe. Yes, sir. Nanobiologist points out that Yulf, Yulf, Wolfenstein Youngblood is not an expansion but a full-blown sequel to Wolfenstein 2. I said it was a standalone. Okay, I missed that. I just didn't, uh, that was news to me, so maybe I'm the one who fucked it up. I no, you attention. didn't fuck it up. Okay. I think nanobiologists heard wrong, which happens sometimes. Well, I think mean, also people write in sometimes while we're still making the point. Mm. That happens. Jump uh, the gun. Lord of Pwn writes in and says, Emily is away has been announced. There's a new, or Emily is away with a heart has been announced. I, I saw, uh, of course, our friend Kyle who made Emily is away and Emily is away two teasing stuff. He's got a new game for Emily is away, but it's got the heart emoji at the end and it's all about Facebook. You can go look into that. I'll try to look into it for you as well. Um... Uh, who cares says PlayStation did announce the iOS remote play in a tweet. I was I said blog or I meant to at least maybe I said tweet. 
He said blog. That kid's wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, Chris says, according to the developers AMA, uh, Gris is or Greece, uh, Gr- Gris is pronounced Greece. Well, they should have spelled it Greece, because then stupid people like me call it Gris. And p- stupid people like me know it's not pronounced Gris, but in the heat of the moment, when I'm just bringing up some news story and I say Greece, that's how it is, man. Sorry. Wait, wait Greece? I've heard the people who work on that game call it Gris. And then Blanc. Not Grizz. Then Blanc, he says, Gris. Gr- Gris is actually pronounced Greece, not Grizz. And so it's just, you're all saying the same thing. But again, I just don't care. I'm sorry. Uh, hey, we have to understand that I'm I'm, stu- so proud of you. I'm stupid and me I will too, continue dude. to say things wrong and we got to like let's just let it go. Gris is always going to be Gris to me. I'm never going to be able to say Gris when I see it. I'm going to say Gris. Mm-hmm. Push All your right? will on them. I'm not pushing my will. I'm just saying there's I'm guess what? If you walk up to me at the Kansas City meet and greet you're like, "Hey Greg, let's run a mile without stopping right now." I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> I guess in you this, could. In the same way you walk up and you show me Gris written on a piece of paper, I'm going to say Gris. Andrea, don't you lie to him. Don't lie to me. <laughs> A mile it's okay. Nothing. And it's then not a big deal, Kebab Greg. says, in case it needs pointing out, the three in the Emily is away less than three emoji makes the three in Emily is away three. I did need that pointed out. Thank you very much. That makes it easier to say. Because, again, it's always going to be Emily is away hard emoji. But now is I get it. Two? Yeah, remember he spelled it T O O. Remember, you don't remember this one? That's the Let's Play that went on for like 90 hours and Tim oh. fucked us at the last second and I will never forgive him for it. I thought that was the... If you uh, ever want to see some crazy ass drunk Let's Plays, <laughs> youtube.com slash kind of funny game, games, Emily is away, Emily is away too. Wait, and watch Tim fuck me over. Emily is away one wasn't the one that lasted for four hours? Oh, they both was... lasted forever. Okay. But like it was the same thing where Emily is away one was a short enough experience to play in one sitting. Emily away is two probably shouldn't have been, <gasps> but we, we just ran and we got, got blackout drunk. Major Nelson just tweeted a custom Captain Marvel Xbox One X. Ooh. It actually looks pretty sweet. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You, of course, can watch live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. You can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and roosterteeth.com. You can listen on podcast services around the globe uh gamescast this afternoon recording live on patreon.com slash kind of funny games we'll be talking about days gone very excited to finally be able to talk oh, about yes. that with you and if you guys are planning to watch live and you have not yet watched my gameplay preview where i talked to john garvin i highly garvin. recommend you go to youtube.com slash what's good games to check it out new gameplay for you to watch and then i think uh tim's reviewing devil may cry 5 as well so it's, it's oh yeah i've been playing gamescast. that too and then fran He's going to be pretty. That's what he does. Now we're going to be talking about Season of the Drifter, Greg. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> so lame. <laughs> Kevin nailed you. It's lame. It's Division 2 for life. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.